Hi kids, today's video will be about spotters that will be kept in your exam. Uh, the first uh, exam that uh, is conducted during your pathology practical exam is the spotters, right? So these can be kept in your spotters, but remember these things can also be kept in your viva. So there will be questions also on top of just identification. I hope you can identify some of the spotters that are in the um, slide. Okay, let's discuss them one by one. So this is your Newbar's chamber. This is used for calculation of cells, whether it is TLC or on your fluid examination. Okay. So we have two modes. Just a second. Okay. So we have these wells or modes. Okay. And these are the counting areas. So these are the two big uh, areas on which we have these counter ruled areas on which we count. And a cover slip is. Uh, placed over it a specialized cover slip comes for it it's very uh, thick and uh, especially just for this counting purpose to give the exact volume that we need and to exact to show the exact distribution of the cells uh, and it is kept in such a way that both the ruled areas uh, are under it so adding the cover slip usually there is on the ruled area usually there is le uh, length and breadth so the, usually it is uh, area right two dimensions are there but uh, adding the cover slip gives it volume because there is depth adding, uh, depth being added to it because of uh, point, uh, the depth being added is 0.1 mm. So the volume of one uh, square will be, one large square on the corner will be 0.1 mm cube. Okay. Now the volume that we were talking about, we'll just discuss. Okay. So there are nine squares. So on Newbar's chamber, when we look at the counting area, there are nine squares, right? You can appreciate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Four corner squares are for your WBC counting, where WBC, W is written. Each of these large squares contains 16 small squares in turn. Okay, so there are four corner WBC squares, which in turn have 16 squares. RBCs are counted on center square. Just a second. So RBCs are counted on your center square. Now this one contains 25 squares, okay? WBC squares were 16, but the uh, RBCs or platelet chamber, this uh, square which is the uh, big center square has 25 squares. Each of these 25 square, square in turn has 16 squares. If you zoom, if you look at them carefully, each of these 25 squares has 16 squares in turn, okay? And uh, the area of one large corner square is 1 mm into 1 mm. So that is 1 mm square. And you add the depth, which is 0.1 mm, 0.1 mm, uh, mm cubic. We'll see RBC and pipettes, how RBC and WBC pipette. Again, this is large square where we count WBC. This is the, uh, this is one small square. In the center large RBC square. So you know we have 25. This is one of those 25 squares. Okay. Which in turn has 16 squares. I hope you remember. I am again briefly describing it. On corner we have 4 large squares. For WBCs. Which have 16 squares. In the center we have 1 large square. Which is for RBC and platelet counting. Which has 25 squares. And each of these 25 squares has 16 squares, small squares in turn. Alright. Now uses of the new vast chamber for TLC that is total leukocyte count. How are you going to count it? You have to add the volume correction. That means you are uh, adding uh, volume correction. The depth uh, has to be added and you are adding dilution also. So dilution factor is usually 1, in, one is to 20 dilution is done. So 20 dilution factor number. So the Okay, the formula is number of uh, WBCs per mm cubic. So the number of WBC counted into dilution factor divided by volume. Okay, area into depth. So the number of, let's say you counted 110 WBCs. So you will write 110 into dilution factor 20, which is usually 20 only, divided by the volume. The volume is area, which is length, breadth and depth. So, but you have also add, you have to also add the number of squares you have counted because there are four squares on corners, right? We are count, this is for WBCs. So there are four corners. So there, that is why the area has been multiplied by 4. So that is 4 square, 4 mm square and then you add the depth 0.1 mm. 
and it can also be done for fluid examination because in fluid examination sometimes we want to see if the lymphocyte count is high as in TB some uh, those patients who are presenting with pleural effusion we want to see do they have some malignant cells uh, atypical cells so we can do that that's a different uh, technique that's a different investigation that the fluids uh, I hope you know that for fluid examination there are four vials sent the vial 1 is sent for your biochemistry, second vial is sent for your microbiological examination, third vial is sent for your the cell cytology, which is the number of cells we are counting as a newborn's chamber and uh, for your malignant cells also. Okay, fourth is for any additional molecular etc, genetic studies etc. Uh, and then you can also count sperm counts on newborn's chamber and you can do urine examination as well. Then the next is your bone marrow aspiration needles. These will definitely be kept in your spotters. So this is your Sala's needle, right? And I hope you can see that this is the guard. This is the guard with the edge and this is your biopsy. So on bone marrow, you can either do examination or you, uh, sorry, aspiration, which is just a bloody smear, which, but if it has particles of the bone marrow, if you invaded it, uh, just at the right spot and uh, it will have cells. But on biopsy, we see the tissue, that means the architecture, the placement of the tissue in respect to cells, the trabeculae of the bone will also be seen. It's a bigger uh, e examination, okay. Now, the sites usually, is, the most common site that we use is posterior superior like spine, okay. Uh, it's not palpable, but it is often indicated by two dimples, the, both the posterior superior like spine or both the sides. You can tell when you look at somebody's spine. And anterior superior like spine can also be done. And for a morbidly, morbidly obese patient, you can use sternum and posterior like crest is used for children and tibial, uh, tibial tuberosity, just below the tibial tuberosity for neonates and infants. Uh, these are, this is your Sala's needle, this is your Jamshedi needle. Again, the Sala needle, the guard is at the edge, the Klima needle, the guard is towards the end, uh, other side. Now, I hope you know the indications of bone marrow examination. You have to know the indications and contraindications. So, indications is uh, to see any uh, infiltrative disorders like malignancy, metastasis, like leukemias, lymphomas, etc. And uh, for, sometimes even for granulomatous diseases uh, like tuberculosis, Wilson's, even hemochromatosis, etc. And uh, it is also done to rule uh, when you cannot ascertain the cause of thrombocytopenia, when you cannot ascertain the cause of anemia, aplastic anemia, uh, when you cannot ascertain the cause of paroxysm of unknown origin, you know, so all of these. Contraindication and there are many more also. So and contraindication when patient has a bleeding tendency because of coagulation factor deficiency or DIC or anticoagulation factor uh, therapy is being given. So you don't do then. And if the at the sampling site, uh, the posterior superior or anterior superior elect spine, patient has some skin infection or patient already was going radi recent radiotherapy, uh, bone disorders because they will make uh, the bone friable. So we don't want to do that. And in multiple myeloma, we know that patient is prone to pathological fractures. So we avoid sternal bone marrow aspiration in that case. This is an IS spatula. This is a device used to collect pap smear. You can, I hope you can see the U-shaped edge and then the flat edge. We rotate it one, uh, 360 degree in the vagina to obtain the cells. Okay, we do. We do make two slides of this. One is for your Jinsa stain and one is your Papnoclos stain. And we see the morphology of the cells on the, uh, the cervix cells. Okay. I hope you know the uses of syringes. This is a 20 ml syringe, but of course we can have 5 ml, 10 ml syringes or 2 ml syringes as well. So the, those are used for your blood collection. The smaller ones, 5 ml or 10 ml, they are used for your blood collection for your cell counts, PBS or your biochemistry or your hormone studies, any number of, n number of indications for collection of blood, right? And this, the bigger ones, usually they do, uh, they aspirate. If you have ever uh, gone to your clinical duties, you would have seen pleural effusion is done with, is, is being done with, is being done with these. Also, ascitic fluid aspiration and then they send these uh, aspirated fluids for, to us for examination to see if the uh, morphology is normal or not. And also uh, for FNAC, when we are doing uh, in 101 room, we do cytology, right? FNAC is done in that room. So fine needle aspiration cytology, for that also you do uh, 20 ml BD syringes used. Coming to WBC pipette, uh, I hope you can appreciate the white bead. Remember WBC white, so white bead, RBC pipette red, so R red, red bead. The graduation hair is up to 11. So how I remember that the graduation hair is 11 and RBC it is one, uh, 101 is because WBC count is usually lower, right? Normal WBC count is 4000 to 11000 or 10000 in some books. 4000 to 10000 or 11000, so lower, 11. And in RBC count, we know RBC count is much more normally. 
सो फाइव पॉइंट फाइव फोर पॉइंट फाइव टू फाइव पॉइंट फाइव मिलियन पर एम एम so that is much more so mil- that is in millions so this is in thousands so that's why the smaller uh, unit is for your wbc pipet and the larger uh, graduation unit 101 is for your rbc pipet the here the bead is in red color the graduation is up to 101 and if you can appreciate the bulb of the rbc pipet is bigger this is just compiling the differences another so we have finished with this video other important spotters are vials which we have already made a video on that and uh, the next video will be about the spotters this can be like we'll these so these will either be as cases or they will be a picture given uh, or it will be focused on microscope and you have to tell what it is like a proper spotter so cml acute leukemia sometimes just calcification or histology meningitis the case will be given and you'll be ha- you'll have to tell if it's bacterial viral or fungal megaloblastic anemia uh, a picture will be put and then jaundice again a case you have to tell the cause of causes of types of hyperbilirubinemia uh, i hope this was helpful thank you very much